Hello, travelers. Welcome back to another episode of Sieve Rants. I recorded the first three in a batch. So at this point, I'm addressing stuff from the first two episodes. I haven't put up episode three before recording that. It's a whole mess, but I'm seeing the comments as they're coming in. For the first time ever, and I know it wasn't aggressive, it was a genuine question, uh, I might have to w have to beat some pre-watch allegations. <laughs> Apparently, I must be on the right track with something <laughs> because somebody was like, yo, man, this is, <laughs> this is a little bit ridiculous. Like, if you haven't watched this and you're already talking, we are talking, here is my... Uh, apple tv page thing as you can see uh let's see well it shows that I've, I've dipped back into the first two for references and screenshots and whatnot and it shows you i've watched three now four only has the bar it has the empty bar because i just like it auto started before we were really able to get into it but again to drive home the point nothing none of these bad boys have been touched according to this account so so i've got most of my notes here from when i started the show there have been some corrections thanks to people in comments uh, i misread the plaque on mark's desk so it turns out it's i thought it was like mark s allentown was his name but i guess there was a dash in there so his name is mark scout mr scout hence that and allentown it seems to be where he either is currently living or where he originated from or whenever he was awarded that that was the, yeah, there you go. It was Allentown. We got to see the perpetuity wing of this massive, what I can only describe as this like underground, it's like the city of Ember, man, down there. Apparently there's like full mansions. There's this brutalist concrete architecture and then sterile, like just brightly vivid lit office spaces that are all just devoid of personality aside from some lovely paintings provided to us by, uh, you can see we'll walk in and the gal right there, <laughs> optics and design, which after a incident or a potential coup, the amount of people involved has been reduced to uh, two. Also, I think Petey might be dead. Petey, AKA Peter Kilmer. I was also corrected lightly in the comments, which is that because when you put the, it's a, they make sure to tell you it's kind of a low key irreversible process. When they put the chip in, it hooks, it hooks in. I mean, if you pull it out, you'd rip your brain out with it. So PD still has the chip in, hence why I guess he's torn between those two worlds and memories of the severed floor and real life. But I guess he found a way to get to just basically reintegrate and get the, whatever would normally flip the switch. I guess he got the chip the capsule deactivated perhaps but all we know about him is that he had a daughter he had, has or had a daughter named june and i don't think he's alive after the last episode also the timeline's throwing me off here because he mentions how he lost his all right i gotta write this down mark claims that he lost his wife two years ago is when he lost his wife i lost my wife a couple years ago in a car accident this is uh it's helping me but he also, when he was talking to their new hire, I thought he said several years ago, not just a couple of years ago. So I, you know, a few years back, I woke up on this table. That's the question I got here. How long has Mark been employed? I am not 100% sure. Was there anything else that I missed? Yeah, someone mentioned the whole look was partially inspired by the Stanley Parable, which I loved the Stanley Parable back when that came out. People agree with me about the Comstock Bioshock Infinite references, so props there. It low, low, I mean, legit. Someone else giving me a little hintity hint, hint, hint. The surgery and a few other things are given away that were not in the 90s, for sure. So <laughs> someone did choke it. But there is a clear differential in the tech down below. Once again, like the Federal Bureau of Control. That's their whole thing, the reason. But they use analog systems because basically the stuff they house and they keep safe and locked away in the in the, the oldest house where the, the game takes place, they can manipulate electronics. So they have to use like radio waves and typewriters and paper filing systems and all that. So I'd be curious to see what the reasoning is for just older tech on the severed floor. Perhaps if they used modern tech, it would either be too much and they'd be able to communicate with the outside or they'd be able to, there'd be interference maybe with what they got going on in their heads. This was another point of correction. So when Alexa talks about half this town being employed by Lumon, Lumon, Lumen, Lumen, she's referring to the fact that it's a company town. Lumen likely owns a lot of subsidi subsidiaries and small companies, like whatever company manages Mark's neighborhood, for example. So people end up working for them indirectly. Also, not everyone who works in the Lumen building is down on the, down on the severed floor. There's a bunch of floors above ground as well where non-severed employees work. 
If two severed Lumen employees met out in the real world, I don't think there's much the company could do to stop them from talking, but it would basically be impossible to figure out if they actually did work together, probably why the entrances and exits are staggered. And I partially agree, but my argument, I think I put it in the comments as well, my argument still stands where it's like, yeah, but even if they don't know if they work together or not, the severed floor can only be so big. So if it came up in conversation and then somebody you know, was like, oh, I, where do you work in Lumen? I work on the severed floor. Oh, I also work in the severed floor. Interesting. Then two people would, would know, right? Two people would at least know that. They wouldn't know if they shared departments, but I just feel like it's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of gray area there. Now, I've gotten a few requests now to check out the Lexington Letter, which is a free book that is a complement to the series. I don't know how long the book is, um, or if it's just, I mean, if it's just a letter, it's just a letter, right? But uh, I do read throughs on my channel. I want to wait till I finish season one. I'll gladly read it. And not only will I read it, I'll do a read through on my channel, which I, I love doing voiceover work as well. So, and then I've triggered some people. Admittedly, it's been a minute since I watched Lost. All right. It's been years. I just recall there being a lot of disappointment. So I don't know if I'll do it on my channel. Maybe it's... <laughs> Maybe at some point in the near, the far, far future, I, I do owe it to myself and I think to all the true fans out there because the show written in its entirety, I enjoyed the journey, but you know what? It's been a while. Perhaps I'll have a better understanding, a new set of eyes, not since I was younger. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably get back around to it. The mystery of the board. I have my theories. I, I have my crazy tinfoil hat theories regarding the numbers. I think it's a form of self-regulation. I yeah, I don't think anybody ever gets out. It's anyway, let's 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 get I've been I've been yapping so much. Let's just get into it. Oh no. Self-harm. Yikes. She's going to get desperate it sounds like. Be advised there is going to be self-harm it appears in this episode, but last we left off, Helly was in the break room. Mark is grappling with uh he doesn't want to reintegrate, but he I think he's trying to figure some stuff out himself as well. There's definitely some secrets going on at Lumen. As much as I love the intro just for the sake of time, I'll be low key skipping intros throughout this series as well. well I can be as sorry and that is all I am. Oh jeez. Literally like that episode of Black Mirror. Not beat for beat, but I mean that would definitely. Oh, she tried to. She tried to kill herself. Is she just been scratching? I'm afraid you still don't mean it. Imagine this is your job, man. How long are we gonna be in here, huh? Don't you need? Don't you need us to do work? No. See, this is, what I, this is what I'm telling you, man. This this proves it, dude. This proves it. Like, there's no actual work productivity being done in this godforsaken hellhole. This is human experiments, human trials and testing. And, and you know what? This punishment has got to be part of it. I'm telling you, like, if you really needed somebody to be, be productive on the company dime, you wouldn't hold in here for what I can visually assume is hours until she has a truthful, heartfelt confession. Well, it's, like, it's like testing to see how long it takes to break people. Jesus. And eventually, you gotta go home. We'll try again in the morning. Yeah, and then how? what, what note do you leave on her, on Heli's car? Oh my god. Abandoned workstations. What note do you leave on her car about the scratches on her wrists and all that? She's gotta piece it together eventually. Dude, Milchek scares me torture and then to her she'll get a little bit of sleep and as soon as she clocks back in in the morning See you tomorrow heli right back to the break room this is hell it's literally hell bro i can't with this guy jesus right back in dude 300 times yesterday 300 times dude this this milchick man is a monster because i know that he can he can cross between the at we've seen him between the upper floors and the severed floors we've seen milchick come and go with ease so even if he does have an implant which i low-key doubt that he does if he's uh, like in middle management then i mean e either he's been reintegrated or he just can yeah he's not affected and he just willingly does this for the good of the company for the good of the company 259 Again, please. Now. What if she refuses? What the hell is that voice? The board? 
her neighbors, these thin walls. Forgive me for the harm I've caused this world. None may atone for my actions, but this, this is very well directed right now, by the way. I love the way that it's. Bro, this is horrific. It's literally. And only in me shall their stain live on. They just. You, if you disobey, they just break you psychologically. Beverly, I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. No paraphrasing. Again. <laughs> Dude, what a, what a bastard. Off to a wonderfully bright start. <laughs> Jesus. I can't even fathom. Oh my God. This hell I'm living. This hell I'm living. And again, the mantra they're forced to repeat. I feel like it has, he looks tired. It's all on PD's phone, right? He looks exhausted, Jesus. The mantra has, like, I thought, religious connotation. Has he been going to work? He called off sick one day, then came back in the next, right? There's no significance to that design. Ugh. Again, I love the music. Like, whenever the mystery is afoot, whenever we're out and about, there's, like, the, uh, something to be solved by the characters. It's the, the little do-do-do-do, the piano, or, like, the intro sequence. But then when we're downstairs and it's all, hey, there, right is rain. It's all vacation music and such. We finally have a clear view. The mind. What do you mean, the mind, dude? Is it actually a hive mind? Is that the board? Okay, hang on. Let me look at this. The perpetuity wing, yeah. Coil? Coil of doom. Okay, so we saw the perpetuity wing in the last episode. Did a tour of it. Team building. Yeah, that makes sense. Because when they were walking, they ran into each other in this hallway here, right? At the cross, where they just got done with the egg exercises and team building. So he didn't see the entire floor, but a lot of it. There's the break room, which is down the long hallway, right? M MDR, macro data refinement. That's where they work. Is that the main elevator right there? And the mind is... It makes sense that the mind is so close in proximity to the elevator, yeah? Wellness? Where are the stairs? X, you're here because we're... We're... Not all there? A ghost with a crown? The mind... Some people might live here. Where's here? Like, in the... Some of this is kind of chicken scratch. It's hard to tell. Clearly, like, a map, but also, like, ramblings. O-D. Curiouser and curiouser. The mind. Dude, I, I'm telling you. Mark. Yep. It's past 1100, and Helly's been in the break room since yesterday. Okay. I wonder if, as department chief, you feel you should check on her progress? Well, Mark doesn't have that power. Well, he, he can ask. He's not going to. He might. Okay. Ooh. Hi. Hi. I'm so sorry <laughs> to interrupt. We met the other day. I'm Bert from Optics. Bert? Okay, that's right. Bert. <laughs> Dude got the stapler ready to fire. So sorry to uh, walk in. Hi, Irving. Hi, Bert. Well, well, what are you doing Exactly here? how the wet f*** do you know where this Dylan. office is? My, my predecessor, Alice Kay, came here once when... They still did the summits, and she left directions. Give us them reversed. Okay, it's all right. Give us what can them we do reversed. for you, Bert? Thank you. Well, Irving, I kept thinking about what you said about being excited. The new handbook totes, and maybe you were kidding or teasing. No, not at all. Okay, good. I've been fretting, though, because you mentioned the anticipation could distract from your work, oh. which was the opposite of my intent. So I figured, oh, hey, buddy. bring them over now. <laughs> That way, it won't be on your mind. Well, you're not you distracted. You pre-release handbook totes. You just Perhaps. made you made Irving's like week. Right thing. I know your time is valuable. Okay, well you can drop them on the desk. Long hike back to O and D. 
Oh. Right. I also Irving's wanted so to extend grateful. an invitation. Again, I know you, you work hard, so if an informal tour of O&D ever sounds refreshing, I'd be happy to personally offer that to Irving. And Hell yeah. Be one of you. Hard pass. Nice. Thank you, Bert. Bert seems sweet. Thank you. Oh, Bert and Irving got a whole thing. Any character I like in this show, I feel like something bad's gonna happen. <laughs> Just seems soon to be taking him up on his offer. It's absurd. We've never visited them before now. Kia's whole original vision saw us all Irving's working excited. together. That was before O and D started disemboweling people's bowels. Nonsense. I'll be back by one. He's gonna die. I'd be curious to learn more about that, by the way, this coup that he keeps referencing of sorts, or at least the rumors of a violent outbreak in OND, though I have a feeling that could have been the cover story. Like, it's probably a cover story manufactured to, like, incite fear and and not have anybody else approach. There may very well have been a coup, or maybe somebody got too wise, you know, too smart for their britches or something. <laughs> His little caricatures. Irv. Irv's going solo? Oh. Oh, jeez. We warned you. How many times? 1,072. I feel so bad for her. Jeez. I mean, look, to their, to their credit, and this does not, like, excuse the behavior, but it, it, it works, doesn't it? Once you go through that, you, you'd never, ever, 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 ever want to go through that again. That's terrible. Again, it's how like monotony drives fear into me. Repetition also is in, is is like can be traumatic and fearful. Key point: I have a terrible time waking up in the morning sometimes. Like, like when I go to sleep, I can stay asleep, but getting to sleep and then waking up is so difficult for me. And oftentimes, like if I'm in if I'm in a deep enough sleep, my alarm will go off, and like the alarm's off, and it's I'm not waking up. But in my dream, whatever the alarm is, becomes this recurring sound. And I, I never recall the context of like where I am or what I'm doing in the dream. But as the alarm invades my mind, I hear it. I can't, it's just a noise that's repeating that I can't turn off. And so for an indeterminate amount of time, in my dream, it feels like minutes, hours, like so much time goes by where I like, I just can't make the noise go away. I just can't make the noise go away. And I'm going insane. And then I, I finally, finally will rouse and wake up. Or the iPhone. iPhones will give up if the alarm goes off long enough. But on my worst mornings, uh, yeah, that's what they'll do. But that's what I'm talking about. Repetition can drive one insane. Well, hopefully Irving doesn't get lost. Everybody draws maps the same way. I guess how else would you draw them, right? How big is this underground? Is it one floor? Door. Crying baby, you mean? No. Like the angry mumbly guy. Guy. Bro. Bro, everyone's experience is like personalized. You go, look. Because he heard, you get to that point. Every, look, and also him saying that, this implies that literally it's the same cycle. New inductee, inductees told what their life is now. They don't accept it. They fight the system. They try to find a hack for it. If they break a rule, or if someone isn't able to cover up for them, they're taken to the break room. There, they are forced to repeat the mantra ad nauseum until they can pass a analog lie detector test showing that they've learned their lesson. So that indicates that literally everybody that's been roped into the system has to go through that at some point or another, which also lends credibility to my theory that this is all human trials and testing. That's literally a group of people, and then they can take all those numbers and create a, like, a, like an average where it's like, here's the average time it took to acclimate these people to their new lives and their new jobs. And furthermore, him literally saying, I heard a crying baby in his darkest hour. She heard angry male mumbling in her darkest hour. Everybody hears something differently based on, I guess, their personal, like real world, uh, like upstairs body experience. So again, that lends, I'm telling you, man, it's all human trials. This, really not supposed to talk about the break room. You know, the important thing is, you apologize correctly, now you're out. What you gotta do is trick the machine by thinking about something you're really sorry about. So, I like to imagine my Audi's love made with a mil for two, which is obviously badass, but I do pity the husbands. <laughs> I love this guy. Twice now, he's, he's like, he's, 
so now he's a he's a a, a bachelor uh a bachelor virile home wrecker <laughs> who, who genuinely pities the husbands that he's that that he's uh cooking and then before he's like i like to imagine that my audi drives a nice car and has this like he's a, just a rich guy in the world and is so super successful i feel like people that are coming here and that are accepting a life-altering surgery probably aren't doing so hot on the surface you know take a wild guess dude irving is lost super lost directions on the back poor man's gonna stumble down the wrong hallway break room sucks but that's why we have protocols and procedures so we don't end up there sure you'll learn i promise you'll learn before you know it everything will be right as rain <laughs> interesting oh oh is Hello? this it yeah optics and design is that it's irving b from macro data refinement irving b we met in the hole the other day. B. Bert's over there by shelf six. Don't touch anything. <laughs> Very friendly. The big envelopes can handle an appendix reissue, but of course, we ship all the hallway pieces in frame. So much to remember. Felicia and I make do. I'm sure it's easier than my few MDR kids get up to all day. I can only imagine what it's like when the new art comes in. I mean, you'll see it before anyone. It's so dumb. But I actually cried when you guys put up the youthful convalescence of Kier. No. I did. I never thought I'd see the handbook passage depicted visually. It was only up for me. It's fascinating. Taking pleasure. This, this he, he is bought, bought in. And taking pleasure in the littlest of things. I mean, both of them appreciate this, but he like envies optics and design for like the artistic side of things. But at the same time, when you're faced with the monotony every day of the cubicle and the coding and the the same thing, uh, morning kids, what's for dinner? And like day in and day out, like yeah, they <laughs> they keep things fresh by freshening. I saw that there's a drawer for the frames, for the artwork, for the designs. You got to change it out. And then add, you you clean to the little things and you're like, oh, look, they changed the font on this or they changed the... It's like when they update like an app that I use for a while where I'm like, guys, you see in the Regal app, they changed the shape of the uh, add a ticket button. I'm like, oh, look at that. They're changing it up. They haven't forgotten about us yet. I never thought I'd see the handbook passage depicted visually. When you put up the youthful convalescence of Kier, I cried when I saw it. I've never seen the handbook depicted that way. What's this representational of, of in the handbook? Only up for a month or so. A man. Oh, what a month. He's jazzed. He really genuinely appreciates it. Oh, he's gonna. Come here. He's gonna share something really intimate now. Once the in whole art's been cycled through all the departments. It ends up back here. Where did Felicia go? Supply run. Felicia. Okay, her name's Felicia. Voila. Let not weakness live in your veins. Cherished workers drown it inside you. Rise up from your deathbed and sally forth. Oh, oh I see. Perfect for the struggle. Let not weakness stay in your veins. I can't believe you. Rise up from your deathbed. You have this. I'm sorry. What time is it? I have to go. I said I took my breath away. Fascinating. Oh, okay. Okay. So I don't know if real Irving is like that or not, but at least severed floor Irving. Certain proclivities. Then they really a fond connection. They shared a moment. Look at that. Wow. I'm I'm almost at a loss for words. Oh, I have a feeling that love will not be able to fully blossom on the severed floor. Give him a time. He, don't worry about it, Bert. He's just shy. He panicked. He freaked out. Felt a good thing. Connected with a human being down here. Really? I got to 4%. Yes! Feels good, right? <laughs> I guess. Awesome. I'm mm. glad you agree. She's not fully broken yet, but... Great work. 
breaking slowly. Just the little crystal slowly revolving. She's gonna look in his drawer later. <laughs> Why do I feel like Irving's journey home is gonna be encountering a little detour? Does bro even have, he doesn't even have the map? He's not looking at it. Did he memorize it? How oh, does one not get like, you gotta get lost all the time. Oh no, what? Not a conference room? This show just pulls me in. So interesting. Who, why would they, they just left it there? Of course he's gonna take it. He's gonna take it. There's no way he just leave it unattended. It's something new, it's different. He's checking the coast is clear, even though there's cameras. Ah, uh, yeah, see, she found it. What's this? Will you uh, put that uh, away? But what do I? It's a map of the hallways. No, it isn't. Oh, no. You know, I thought we weren't supposed to make maps. We're not. I didn't. It's just something I found. I think Petey made it. Oh, shit. You didn't turn it in? Uh, You're such a hypocrite lecturing me on following the rules. I wasn't For real? lecturing you. I'm just trying to keep you out of the break room. I can't believe Petey was a mapper. Let me see. <laughs> <laughs> it's got wellness, management, perpetuity, everywhere we know of. This must have taken him weeks. Damn. Why aren't we supposed to map the office? It's an Egan rule, render not my creation in miniature. Why? An Egan rule, Ren render my creation not a miniature? Oh, okay, sure, sure, yeah. I don't even think the Egans exist, if you had to ask me. Somebody's writing up some lore upstairs. They look like houses, right? That's how houses look. Yeah, exactly, because these are random bored doodles. Well, maybe they're on the outside and Petey found a way to get to them. So why would they be on a map of the severed floor? It could be a thing, you don't know? It's not a thing. Clearly he was trying to tell you something. Uh, no. Go like a boot, Mark. You're more loyal to this place than to your friend. I'm loyal to how it felt around here before you showed up. You mean when Petey was here? Yeah, because there was balance. We could have fun and work without the whole goddamn department imploding. The work is Jeez. bullshit. The yeah. work is mysterious and important. And we <laughs> deal with the uncertainty it brings us in the way that Kier would have wanted. Yeah. Together. As a family. And the work is mysterious and important. <laughs> That's literally like the mantra. The work is mysterious and important. You either buy in or they break you and you lose your damn mind. I could not, with a razor to my throat, be less interested in being your family. Damn. Your best friend left this for you and you don't give a shit. Cares enough to keep looking. Oh. What's bro over here think though? That's what I want to know. Awfully quiet, giving a lot of looks. You're right. I don't give a Mark. There, it's gone. Thank you, Helly. Now we can get back to work. Mark. <sighs> hmm? It's an emergency. Oh, what's up? The book. Okay, uh, all right. I was going to get Mr. Milchuk, but I thought it best not to break the chain of command. It's just raining contraband today. What do you mean? <laughs> it doesn't oh. matter. Has anyone seen anything like this before? Passage 31, page 110. Be content in my words and dally not in the scholastic pursuits of lesser no, men. No books except the handbook. Bro, it's a cult. It's like, literally, it's like cult mentality. Be content in my works and consider yourself not with the work of the scholastic pursuits of lesser men. You know, there's a uh, there's a certain book out there that, uh, you know, when people kind of take the word of it and pervert it, it kind of starts to sound like the same type of thing. You know what I'm saying there, Johnny? What are you doing? His ego's pissed because Helly called him out for bootlegging. My ego's fine. I'm just trying to... Damn. Keeping it real. Mark. Oh, what is this? Maybe it's another PD message. Flip through, see if my name's anywhere. <laughs> I bet it's a loyalty test. Remember the spicy candy? I'll be turning this into Milchik. What? Why? It's booty. It's booty with your name on it. Excellent decision, Mark. This is an idolatrous text that should be brought to him immediately. Idolatrous. I don't know if that was intentional. I think they might have accidentally left it. But that tells me if she's going to try to put the shreds together. Because of that old bitch is snooping in Mark's real life house and, and stealing the book off the front stoop. She might have helped to unravel this whole system. Or at least like plant more seeds of doubt in Mark's mind. 
or seeds of curiosity rather yeah she's gonna take the shreddings and try to re try to reassemble it there's no way she's not that's the curious thing i'm sure the it would pick up on it the system would but if you shred something if you shred ooh, a weapon birds fostered a really welcoming environment he understands the spirit of lumen oh what's she Ellie? done now though Excuse me, Helly. Jesus, Helly. I want a camera. I am so sorry, Miss Cobell. I what is happening here? What's happening is you're going to give me a video camera so I can tape a resignation to my Audi right now. Or you're going to have to explain to her why she's missing four fingers. <laughs> okay. That's just... <sighs> it's Cobell, right? Yes. Cobell. Cobell. Do I look like I'm f***ing around right now? No, no, you do not. Ellie? Dude, this is a solid play, though. Oh, what, is she going to blame Mark for this somehow? Dude, she's getting to a point where she's like, I'm going to cut off my fucking fingers. I swear to God. Like, explain that away. Why am I any lost fingers? What, in a workplace accident? Right after getting scratches on her wrists? Hi, Mark. I'm just catching up with your trainee, Mr. Milchek. Could you get the video camera, please? But what? Here's the thing. What good is this gonna do? Because she can tape a video if she wants, but there she has literally. There's no guarantee of getting it to her outside self. They, the it'll set off the alarm in the, in the elevator. What impetus would they have to deliver the video? It's a it's a bold attempt, and I I applaud her for for trying it, but. I could just delete it just as easily. It can't be that easy. I shouldn't say easy, by the way, but like, no one's subduing her right now. Why not? She's gonna be allowed to. There's no shot. Well, boss, I guess this is the part where I should tell you to go to hell. <laughs> but you're already there, motherfucker. <laughs> Welcome to hell, motherfucker! But no, because, like, she's going to get out there. She's going to be like, why do I have a DVD in my hands? And watch, somebody will be upstairs and be like, oh, I, you were going to give that to me. I'll take that off your head. Like, there's, Or maybe the elevator goes further down. Oh, she goes to the hive mind. Ah, personal meeting with the board. Uh, like. Except you're already here. Oh, what I tell you? Bro, she said, mm, uh, deuces, deuces. Uh, no, not going to happen. I was never sorry. No. Wait, what? You didn't think it would be that easy, did you? Bro, how crazy would it be if, like, she got a response from her Audi and her Audi is like, I I'm not quitting. Dude, come on with this. Here's your response. Hallie, I watched your video asking that I resign. I also received and responded to your previous request. I assume that would resolve the issue, but... Now, Miss Cobell says you threatened to cut off your fingers. I understand that you're unhappy with the life that you've been given. But you know what? Eventually, we all have to accept reality. So, here it is. I am a person. You are not. Whoa! Oh, my God. What? <laughs> what? Bro. <laughs> oh my god. I'm crying. <laughs> That's so f***ed up. What? You dumb bitch. She's you. I make the decisions. You oh do my not. god. And if you ever do anything to my fingers, know that I will keep you alive long enough to horribly regret that. No way. Chad, is this real? Like, is this real? Is that, is it like legit? Like, oh my God. Like, she seems so nice up top. Unless this is fabricated. What the heck? That's crazy. That's actually crazy. Dude. Your resignation request is denied. Turn it off. No way. No way. Severed floor is a barometer for human empathy, maybe? 
Either that's a fabrication Welcome or... Welcome your child into a world surrounded by nature? No thanks. Scroll down to explore our rustic birthing cabins. It looks more like a shitty ski resort than a birthing center to me, but... I'm re reeling from that. That is... <laughs> that's actually crazy. I mean, perhaps it's a fabrication, or, but it tracks too much with, like, her inside story. So even if they fed them a... I mean, they could be feeding her any kind of narrative they wanted, but, like, maybe it's the way they're sold it, right? Like, the way that the company sells it to them is that this is a... It's this version of you isn't truly you. It's like, I mean, it's still you. And at the end of the day, you don't even know what's going on there. You go to work, we flip a switch in your brain and you, and your, your any does the job, right? Maybe they like have some type of like, uh, that, um, like misinformation campaign where they say like your any isn't a person. Don't worry about it. But again, I'm, I, again, it's all just connected, connected to the human trials. So they can tell them whatever they want to do down there. They're just doing meaningless, repetitive, uh, self-correcting tasks. How much of this was Reagan's idea? 300% or 400%? Get all of your snark out now or you're never going to earn your uncle badge. You know what? I think I might have some more snark in me. I'm kind of tired. Try tomorrow? Ookie B. Ookie B. Both inside and outside of work, he's a big old goober. The gut reaction is how could she be so heartless, but... He's dead? Severed lumen worker dies after collapsing from unknown ailment. Yeah, PD's dead. He's in the phone key. You gotta answer the phone. You're going to answer the phone. Of course you are. But who could be calling? Is it a burner phone? It's a blocked number that keeps calling. Oh, well, good morning, Mr. Egan. Three raw eggs and milk, right? Mr. Have you Egan. heard from the board yet? No. Kilmer wasn't your fault, and it certainly wasn't mine. They'll understand. It wasn't your fault, Harmony. Okay, so, because I wrote Gemma down at one point. Gemma's his, I forget who Gemma was. Harmony Co Coble on the inside, which I think is her real name. Cabell? I think it was Cabell. If you want a hug, go to hell and find your mother. Jesus. Jesus. It's PD reintegrated. The board's never acknowledged reintegration. We have to get his chip. His corpse is scheduled to be destroyed by cremation following his funeral on Sunday. FYI. Well, we got a job then, don't we? I really don't like her character. Milchek, I under, I, I'm just scared of, but her, I just, she's, ugh, I just don't. I mean, she, the actress plays her incredibly well, but I don't like her character. What? Hang on, Sub, subtitles. Give me the subtitles. Fish. Fish. What? Cheer. Cheer. Humility. Humility. Benevolence. Benevolence. Nimbleness. Slow down. Please slow down. These are the core tenements of Lumen. Probity. Probity. Wow. Egan, right there. Wow. Watch you say it twice. I know most of those words, but probity. The quality of having strong moral principles. You wouldn't just say morals? Wiles. Definition. Devious or cunning stratagems. She repeated that twice. I see. Stratagems. Deviousness. Deviousness. Uh, she'll figure out a way to get the corpse, I'm sure. Yep, those are, those got to be the nine the nine core tenements. Tenements of Lumen. Vision. Ver. And what's verb again? <laughs> Enthusiasm or vigor. Why would you use these like archaic synonyms? I swear. <laughs> Vision, verve, wit, cheer, humility, benevolence, nimbleness, probity, wiles. Those are the nine tenements of the fact that it's not ten irritates me. This company irritates and intrigues me. Oh my god. Fuck. Hi. This is Sylvan. What are you doing here? News reports said that he worked at Lumen, so I thought maybe I, I, I knew him. What are you doing here? Oh, he used to come by my shop. He adored my hibiscus wrap. Oh my See, that's what I'm saying. That's, exa that's exactly what I meant. Literally, he read a report in the Chronicle that said a severed floor employee died. And although he didn't know, he doesn't know if they worked together. 
Well, I mean, he he does because Petey told him, but he's covering for himself. But anybody could have done this. Saw in the newspaper. Oh, I also worked on the severed floor. Did I know this this gal and or guy? And that's my, 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 my point. <laughs> like, that's so much uh, that you can have some overlap. Oh, my God. Wow. The small, small world. world. Oh, poor, poor man. Well, on the upside, at least now we both have a date. <laughs> Great. She's going to wait for an alone moment and scoop that chip out. Is that his wait, is that his daughter? He had a daughter. Uh June, right? Uh whiskey rocks. Oh, it's just wine, sir. Rough, one of those. Free bar, just wine and beer. <laughs> That's her, right? Gotta be. What a shame. What 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 the, what the family felt about the decision? Does Lumen have like a life insurance policy or a payout or something? What are the benefits like? The pay? Gotta be good. Tiny enough to get to undergo a medical procedure. Yes, it's got to be it. Her, sorry, Jesus. Hello, were you a friend? He was my dad. Jim. Oh, I'm so deeply sorry. And I suppose you were close and everything. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> I suppose you were close. I'm sorry, I don't know you. I'm Mina. Oh, oh, oh. Mark's got. Mina. I'm Peter's ex-wife. Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Sorry. You're from Lumen. So you didn't even know him at all. Damn. <laughs> Boy, I just figured I'd know him. Hey, Mom. Yeah. They want to start. Damn. Okay, Bro. Uh, are you June? Yeah. Hmm. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> okay. Family's not a fan of the company. That's what I'm talking about, dude. See right there. Like, even though he did meet him on the outside world for real, for real, if you were just like a, like a guy and you're like, oh, I saw this guy that worked at the same company on the same floor that I worked at, dot, like you would be like, hey, maybe I knew him. We worked on the same floor, maybe not the same department, but who knows? You start asking questions. Maybe you get some answers. So you knew my dad? I knew of him. Um, yeah, at work. Oh, you're one of those. <laughs> Do you ever think that maybe the best way to deal with a f***ed up situation in your life isn't to just shut your brain off half the time? I'm not exactly sure. Is That explains why... P so, Mark took the job because his wife died. Petey took the job because of his divorce, if that's his ex-wife. Unless she divorced him because he took the job. May I perform something for you? Solid call out, though. Uh oh, copyrighted music. Oh, oh my God! Was he in a band? Rock show time. Oh. Say your prayers, little one. Don't forget my son. To include everyone. Sleep with one eye open. Gripping your pillow tight. Tonight. She's gonna go scoop his damn brains out. And that ridiculous quilted coat. Oh, yep, yep. Oh. Do you think it's going to be like they do when they're uh, putting the Egyptians in a sarcophagus and they take the needle and they like, they shove it up and then they like twist it and scoop the brain out that way? You think it'll be like, I think it would make more sense if it was like high tech equipment that like maybe goes back into the same way that it implanted the device. But I think it'd be hilarious if it was some archaic, like I like lobotomy. <laughs> situation dreams of war dreams of lies dreams of dragons fire and of things that will bite Damn. Dude, she has no problem desecrating a body <laughs> we're off to never never land that's not even quiet Nobody hears this. I thought she waited for the guitar. Really. Oh, it's all a little bit too much, isn't it, Mark? Dude, if he walks in on her, no way. 
She'll already be done. No way he'll catch her in the act. No. Oh, oh. sweetheart. Oh. You're all right. I'm so sorry. Yeah. I think I have the cystitis under. This was a mistake. I have to go. So was the funeral just too sad or? <laughs> Bro, leave him alone, oh, man. Something like that, yeah. If you ever want to talk. Oh, no, thank you. I just. Thanks, Mrs. Selv Miss Good Selvig. Good night. Good night. Remember the Remember court tenements, Mark. Mark. Why? What did they do with the book, by the way? Where are you going, Mark? I was gonna say, are you gonna check out the body? But no, maybe he's gonna investigate the the area that he was living in the greenhouse or something. I mean, we're in the middle of the woods, right? What is he going to the cabins? On the brochure? Sister's place? In the woods where he showed up? Where his wife died? She died in like a car accident or something? There's a memorial marker. I think it's where his wife died. We're just kind of far away. It's hard to tell. That makes sense though. Goes to goes to funeral, thinks about death, relationships, family. Visits the site where his wife died. A tree. What did she did she wrap her car around a tree? Damn. Yeah, see, this is what grieving feels like, sir. I'm sure you've done your fair share and the and the start of it, but perhaps by working at Lumen, you've been doing less of it. Oh, again, I love this weather. Yeah, the funeral definitely had him thinking about about his wife. Got it. <laughs> How did you? That's Petey. That's Petey. How did you? Would you mind taking that up to diagnostics for me? How did you? How do you think, buddy? She's cold, man. Yes. You requested me, Miss Cobell. Miss Casey. Casey. I'd like you to run a special wellness session with Marcus. Oh no. Marcus. Casey. I'm just guessing how these names are spelled. I see. I I'm sure you're wondering, movie man, why don't you have subtitles? And for me, I like to experience it fresh without any distractions or anything. I use subtitles for clarification, but so many times I've watched a movie or a TV show or subtitles, thanks to a, a dash or a bit of punctuation, or it's like when you're reading something in general in a subtitle, your, your, your eyes can't help but go to the end, which cuts down on the dramatic tension. And then if it's like a dash and it cuts off, you know, someone's about to be interrupted or maybe someone's about to be shot or tackled or whatever. So this will be interesting, though, because if he goes in a wellness session, we'll know if the wellness factoids that he's given, since he's the only link we have to the outside world, we'll know if the factoids he's given are accurate. And if that means they're accurate across the board for everybody's any and outy situation. She knows that Mark's struggling in the real real, so she's trying to, like, dig deeper into that. What's the problem? He just needs it. Trust me. That's not genuine sympathy, is it? Oh, oh, hey, you lovebirds. Oh my god, Irving. Kier invites you to drink of his water. Irving. Felicia said you'd be here. Mm. Is it awful to say I don't care for that one? No, it makes me nervous too. Such a lovely vista, but I keep thinking he could slip. Mm. I ship these two so it was hard. A thrill to have someone from MDR come see us, to take an interest like you did. So, if I embarrassed myself, you didn't. No, 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 no. Mm? Unless you did. Are you embarrassed? No. Good. That's nice. I have four more stops. Care to join me? Would MDR consider joining me? Hey, yo, let's go. MDR would. Oh, You're crazy. <laughs> I wish I could nap. I love, I love it. I wish I could nap. I wish I was narcoleptic. But you know what this means? They're, they're, they're cute. It's lovely. It's sh it's so shippable, and it's gonna end in absolute devastation and tragedy. I'm not ready to cry about these two. I'm not ready. This can only end in tears. Fifteen hours a night up there. It's a character flaw. Just means you're a party guy, Disco King. I can't be falling asleep, Bert. 
Who cares? The handbook cares. No workplace shall be repurposed for slumber. Oh. I know the handbook, old man. I'm more of a first edition guy. <laughs> he, more, look, he might help teach Irvina let loose a little bit. Original word of Kier. And I shall whisper to ye dutiful through the ages. In your noblest thoughts and epiphanies shall be my voice. You are my mouth. And through ye, I will whisper on when I am ten centuries devised. Perfect I for don't each understand. Other. He doesn't just speak to us through the handbook, the paintings. He finds other ways. Dude, again, like a cult. He doesn't. Do, he speaks to us. He, it's like it's like he's a deity. It's like he's to be worshipped as a god. He has texts, he has art, he has statues, he has literally monuments, he has mantras, all this type of stuff. It's such heavy religious connotation as if he himself is to be revered as such, a deity. Like, uh, <laughs> bro, and they're all, they've all been, once you're indoctrinated, you then spread the gospel. Is this all a metaphor for, like, organized religion? <laughs> like, he speaks to us through other, he finds, he finds other, other ways. ways. What if he's, like, a zealot? Urban's not a zealot, but he is definitely, like, loyal and he's definitely a uh like a fervent worshiper right so what if he like tries to fully convert irving into a, just a, a religious nut zealot i don't know that's again tinfoil hat possible narrative offshoots but is a vagrant abstaining from my own money to rely oh he's reading that book strangers most were beggars themselves yet they were happy and so for that summer was i He's going to learn about his real self. Your job needs you. Yo, union, union. Safe travel. Socialist mindset yeah. over here. Thanks. Aww. Gundi. Ta-ta now. Okay, here's the, here's, the te here's the test. Was Harmony genuinely trying to help Mark and like he needs this right now? Or is it like a he needs this right now? Like... And then are the factoids going to match his actual life? Or are they just going to be these, like, false placations? I'm going to go. Do it. I'm working up till the bell. I think I may still crush this thing tonight. Oh. Hope you do. See you soon. Is she going to try to smuggle shreddings? Well, no. She can, there'd be no point. Because her Audi doesn't give a shit. No, but she has a map now. She's going to explore more. Is she gonna kill herself? Bro, if she kills herself, is she gonna hang herself? Oh, but he's curious. Oh, look at this guy though. They're all curious, of course they are. They project that they've bought in, but I don't think any of them wanna be here. They've all just had to, they have to like play the part. Dude, I think she's gonna, I think she's legitimately like lost hope. She's gonna just end her life despite herself and to, Oh, dude, dude, they're <laughs> pillaging each other's cabinets. <laughs> he said, I knew it. Sometimes Bro. I ask people to sculpt how they feel out of clay. Would you like to do that? All right. Whose face? Is that Egan's face behind her? It's got to be. Kier's, I think, is the most recent one, right? Sculpt your feelings out of clay. So many moving parts right now. Irving's too happy. Characters in this show aren't allowed to be happy. Dude, she's going, she's gotta do it. Either she's gonna break something or she's just gonna straight up kill herself. So it did say self-harm. An acrostic poem experienced by the author Rick and Hale. Yeah, she's going to, or she's gonna to attempt to. Bro, this show, <laughs> dude, there's so many moving parts. Now we've reached destiny. Oh no, what's going on in the back rooms? D oh no. It's for dreaming. The start of it all. E is for energy. Breaking down walls. I told you. I told you. S is what for stewardship. What other way out is there? Of home and of earth. T is for terror, which gives us more worth. He lied to him. We have a department of two, he said. Expansive. There's dozens of people in there. 
I is for eyes, which observe us with love. Dude, is someone gonna stop her though? Well, she's distracted. She's Until watching. End, meaning newness, rains down from above. No, because Cabell's distracted. Why? That's a question we needn't now ponder. For destiny, friends, shall deliver all yonder. Hey, how are you? Good. Yeah? Seems like you're getting the hang of stuff here. Cool. Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. Hey, if you need help, seek help. But like, that's different. <laughs> the grim barbarity of optics and design. LOL. I can't falter for her decision. No other option for her. What else did she have? Hey, look, if her Audi was as big of a bitch as she seemed to be and, and so uncaring, she's like, and if you, I'll make your life even worse in there. If you don't want to go along with it, she's like, you know what? Screw you and screw me. If I can't be happy, neither of us are going <laughs> to take us both out. I don't give a shit. Four episodes in. Oh my God. I'm so glad that with every passing episode, the show gets like better and better. Oh my God. That's so good. Ah, that was a shame. I knew it couldn't last though. They had a little thing going on there, but no, there's, they're perpetuating a lie because there's a whole enormous department in the back. Supply run my ass. We learned the nine tenements of Lumen. Irving and Bert have a crush, but Bert's clearly hiding some secrets. Before Mark even started his wellness session, he sculpted like a tree. How do you feel right now? And he sculpted what looked like a tree. The tree itself, like it spooked Cabell. I think Egan's just being like heralded as a god. I love this. There's so many mysteries. I am I'm curious about one thing. I realized I was talking over it and I wasn't paying too much attention. D oh destiny. D is for dreaming. E is for energy. Bring it down. S is for stewardship of home and of earth. T is for terror, which gives us more worth. I is for eyes. Okay, sure. Which observe us with love until N, meaning newness, rains down from above. And why? That's the question we need to now ponder. For Destiny, friends, shall deliver all yonder. Love the uh, dramatic timing of the reading when he finds the book. I like that a lot. Ah, God, I'm so in. Oh, my God, I love this. Uh, so many good shows we're watching right now. Dude, Severance slaps. I just started Interview with the Vampire. That slaps. Of course, the bear slaps in its own way. After ending Succession, what a, what a transition. It's like Succession, but incorporates some sci-fi elements. Ah, that's great. Well, I, I've said all I can say. Uh, the good thing about pausing during the episode, as always, is that there's not a whole lot of epilogue to go over once everything's said and done. So I got most of my thoughts out in the open. I discussed it beat for beat as we went. So you know my theories, my crazy tinfoil hat theories, my observations, my my thought processes. Stay tuned for episode five of Sieve Rants. As always, thank you so much for love and support. Feel free to subscribe and hit that button that if you want to be notified whenever i post in general instagram handle up there by pretty much the same name for my various exploits and posting twitch i'm trying to stream more often so whenever i do stream it'll be on there everybody have a good night love you thank you and goodbye travelers mm -hmm.